We're rolling. Okay. <coughs> so we're going to hear a debate between uh, Andrew and Katie on the Patriot Act. Can I start to head in? Can someone, like, give me a dirty what? Okay, okay. Head thing. Right. Don't you read our Facebook page? Please. She starts the what? <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I didn't she like comment this. on my video. I see what, yeah. Is it up? No. Yes. It is? Okay. Yours oh, is up. I still put yours. Is it okay? Yeah. okay. So should I just now. comment on it? Like, <laughs> and then... Yes. Alright. Ready? Okay. You have four minutes to uh, give your affirmative constructive speech. I'll raise my hand. Criminalizing free speech, denying citizens due process, unchecked government surveillance. Is this the KGB of Soviet Russia? The junta in Myanmar? No. Regrettably, these violations of civil liberties are legal here in the United States. In the Patriot Act, the government ignores constitutional freedoms, discriminates against foreign nationals, and eliminates checks and balances on executive power. According to an article that appeared in the Nation Journal in 2003, the act passed as a reaction to the fear and panic brought upon the <coughs> September 11th attacks, and a few members of the Congress actually read the 342-page bill. Many of those that voted in favor of it, including many conservatives, have since expressed regrets about the provisions that it makes. I resolved to amend the Patriot Act so that it does not violate civil liberties, focusing on immigration provisions, the definition of terrorist support, and surveillance policy. First, consider immigration provisions. The government retains the right to expel any foreigner, even lawful permanent citizens, solely on the basis of association with disfavored organizations. A recent example of this case is Kahadar Hamid and Michael Shenida, two Palestinians that had lived in America legally for over 25 <coughs> years. According to an article from USA Today, the government had called for the deportation of these men for distributing magazines connected with the Palestinian Liberation Organization in the 80s, the activities they engaged in were not only lawful at the time, but protected by their First Amendment rights, which guarantees freedom of speech for all. The act also gives the government powerful to deny entry into the government, bringing back the principle of ideological exclusion, which basically means keeping people out solely on the basis of their speech. Also, the act allows for the indefinite detention of immigrants that the Attorney General deems to be dangerous, dangerous to the community. This provision is yet to be invoked, however, which suggests that it was not necessary to stave off terrorist attacks, as was claimed. These provisions would have, have not been shown to be effective and would be abolished under my plan. It is illegal to provide expert advice or assistance, even if it's advice to turn away from violence and pursue peaceful objectives to terrorist groups. In a case that ruled this provision unconstitutional, a college student was prosecuted by the government for operating a website which included links to another website that in turn included speeches that advocated jihad. The government felt that it was irrelevant that there was no evidence that the students shared these views. There is no question that funding terrorist groups should be prohibited, but it was prohibited long before the existence of the Patriot Act, so I propose that these provisions also be abolished. Perhaps the most notable violation of civil liberties has to do with surveillance, though. The Act expanded government power to spy on citizens while simultaneously reducing judicial supervision and control over such spying. The first issue of this is national security letters. These are letters that enable the FBI to request any information on any individual or corporation without needing approval from the court. <coughs> According to the government quarterly, it is impossible to tell how often or in what manner the FBI is abusing this provision and is prohibited for the receiving party of a national security letter to inform anyone of the situation. Other surveillance issues are the library's provision, which authorizes the government to get records from any entity that keeps records on its patrons or customers, sneak and peek, peek searches, which allows for clandestine se searches of people's house, which violates the Fourth <coughs> Amendment, and wiretap searches. Under my plan, these provisions would be abolished. If the government really needed access to these records, they would have to go through a grand jury subpoena, which requires a substantial criminal investigation and does not uh, provide the cover of secrecy. <laughs> okay, so you have um, 30 seconds to prepare your questions. Okay. Okay.
speaker's presentation, you brought up a point of violating due process. I want you to elaborate on how the Patriot Act violates due process. It violates due process because um, the, the foreigners that would have been detained upon entry to the country would not be provided with a hearing or a trial. They would just be detained at entrance by the Attorney General. <clears throat> And is the speaker aware that that's not true? And under the Patriot Act, after a person is surveilled or surveyed for a series of time, there's no deportation without a person's consent or some sort of um, going from the judge. But they could be detained indefinitely. That is a <coughs> provision of the act. All right, and also in your presentation, you want to amend, not repeal, the Patriot Act. Says, yes or no, does that mean that you want the Patriot Act to stay like, around? I would like it. Yes or no? Yes. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you also say that a grand, uh, they would mandate a grand jury subpoena. Um, are you aware that that would take at least a week? Yes. And are you aware that terrorists don't wait a week to blow up America? Um, this. Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, also, it's bad for national security. Um, your plan calls for an amendment, not a repellent. And you also say that FBI uses it for other cases. I want an example of that as well. Uh, the wiretaps are used, can be used for any federal case, even... That's, that's not true. According to the Patriot Act, the only thing that would regard to a wiretapping or a cell phone survey would be a uh, terrorist-related activity. Like, I'll bring it up in my presentation in a second, but there have been cases where the FBI has tried to use it, the Patriot Act, for robbers and murders, and they've not been able to do so. You have one minute to prepare your negative construction. <coughs> I'm ready to go now. Are you sure you don't want to? All right. All conspiracy theories aside, few, if any, people saw such a drastic event, such as another Pearl, Har Pearl Harbor, happening again. But on the morning of September 11, 2001, America was attacked for the first time in almost 60 years. Thousands of people were killed. Even more were injured. America was such a strong country that we grouped together and we all wanted to ensure that something like this would never happen again. We wanted to show the world that no one can bring our freedom and liberties down and we were still the strongest and the best nation on the planet. Our Congress quickly passed the Patriot Act, giving government agencies a, war a warrantless access into suspected terrorist line. The Patriot Act should not and cannot be repealed because it does not violate civil liberties it's working and doing what it was meant to be done, and the government is not vi violating the Patriot Act. First off, the Patriot Act should not be repealed because it is, in fact, not an invasion of privacy and does not violate civil liberties. According to the New York Times, the original Patriot Act was quickly re revised and amended within the first six months to, ex to give extended civil liberties to American citizens. The act was passed to ensure another September 11th would never happen again. Secondly, the Patriot Act should not be repealed because it is doing its job at catching terrorists. According to BNET.com, a subsidiary of CBS News, the United Kingdom's version of the Patriot Act saved thousands of lives by exposing a plot to detonate airlines with a mixture of explosive liquid and gels. Had their version of the Patriot Act <coughs> been repealed and not used, thousands of people would have died. Third. The Patriot Act is securing America, and the government is not violating what the Patriot Act stands for, as many believe. <coughs> According to the official wording of the Patriot Act from both Congress and the White House, this act will be and is currently only used for potential terrorism. The Patriot Act quotes, quote, the law, allow the law allows our intelligence and law enforcement officials to continue to share information it allows them to continue to use tools against terrorists that they use against. Also in the Patriot Act, it specifically says that you cannot use a warrantless search or seizure or survey for someone that is not terrorist related. Um, the government cannot use the Patriot Act for any potential embezzlers, murderers, kidnappers, and robbers. Instead, they still need a warrant to search through their personal belongings. The Patriot Act has done a great job in the last several years. 
Due to national security, we will never know how good the Patriot Act has done. Is there a strong chance that we have saved no lives? Yes, that's always going to be the case with every law official, all right, with every type of document. But the greater chance is that the Patriot Act has saved another act of terrorism from happening on United States soil. And if we repeal the Patriot Act now, there is no telling what time will do. And there is a strong chance that terrorists will strike this country again. How many times do they need to win before America needs to realize that we need to do something about this terrorist? After September 11th, we all agreed that we did the right thing in enacting the Patriot Act. Why is so, everyone so against it right now? freedom of speech to be an important right of the American people? Yes. Would you, um, do you believe in the checks and balances system of our government? Yes. Do you believe that people should be punished for act actions they committed before the action was made illegal as goes back to the law? No. Do you believe that people should be legally responsible for the actions of others? Yes or no? Depends on the situation. Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> Are you aware that there need be no evidence shown to either a court or the person that they're investigating for there to be a federal investigation of someone who is suspected of terrorism? For a potential person that's going to blow up America and kill thousands of lives, yes, for national security. Doesn't, how can that not be taking away civil liberties? They don't need a court approval. Suspected terrorism activity in every country in the world in any other country, if there was suspected terrorism, they would be thrown in jail immediately without a trial. Some are even executed. Well, our country is one of the top countries in the world. We give them a chance. We listen to them before. And that's enough. Um, you said that um, it's only effect. It's only within terrorism cases. But are you aware that um, it also expanded the FISA Act that um, that ex extends to any federal crime? You can what is FISA? It is the um, it stands for the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. And no, I was not aware of that. Okay, so it's not just terrorism. Um, but according to the document, if there's proof that an FBI agent or a law enforcement agent uses the Patriot Act for anything other than terrorism, they will be on probationary leave. I'm paraphrasing. Okay, but... Can you give me a okay. case where the our agents didn't use uh, can, terrorism? For the... For wiretaps and searches of houses, it can be conducted um, even without probable <coughs> cause. For terrorist-related activities. Yeah. So you have 30 seconds to prepare your rebuttal, which will be two minutes. advocate ex post facto law, but this act does, such as in the case of Kader Hamid and Michael Shenandoah, who are prosecuted for criminal acts that they committed at a time when they were not yet considered illegal. My opponent believes that the act should remain as it is and is not a violation of civil liberties, but how can we say this when many federal court rulings have stated otherwise? The courts have supported my views that many of the provisions this act makes are unconstitutional. Ironically, 
This act also supports unitary executive theory by giving the executive branch much more power than the other states, making it nearly impossible for the act to be overturned. My opponent says that he believes in checks and balances, but in his espousal of the Patriot Act, he contradicts himself. The unbalanced way that the power is distributed under this act goes against the values of this country and is unconstitutional. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> Andrew, you have 30 seconds to prepare, and you'll be, you have three minutes to speak. Remember, this is your last chance to speak, so you also uh, want to summarize your argument in addition to, uh, you know, re responding to what she said. My opponent, Katie, states that national security is one of the most important aspects to America today. The values of this country that she also points out, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. How can we enjoy ourselves if terrorists are ruining our lives and terrorizing our every aspect of our life? On September 11, 2001, our country was devastated. I'm pretty sure that everyone in this, group, in this room would agree with me that they felt an urgency of national pride, and they loved to be an American that day because they knew we stood up for what America believes in. The Patriot Act only further enhances this, and it helps us to catch these terrorists that are trying to ruin our life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. If this life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness is so important to you, then you would understand that we need to catch these terrorists that are trying to take this away from us. And instead, we need to take away their life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. You argue that the Constitution covers these rights under these people, but terrorists that are not citizens of the United States are not covered under the Bill of Rights nor the Constitution. Um, contrary to what you said, I found no evidence that people are prosecuted for no reason, <coughs> and there have been no cases where a non-terrorist suspect has been deported for no suspected terrorism. You say it yourself, the Patriot Act works. You say that the Patriot Act should not be repealed and should be amended. The Patriot you said it yourself, the Patriot Act has, sa has saved thousands of lives. Now, I can't speak for other countries, but another perfect example would be the Engl English Patriot Act, which has saved eight Boeing 757s from being blown up over the Atlantic Ocean. All in all, if you want the terrorists to win, go ahead. Give them their life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. But if you want to enforce what America stands for, what our founding fathers believed in, what we all want and want to achieve as American citizens, the Patriot Act is a great thing and should not be repealed. God bless America. <laughs> Katie, you have uh, 30 seconds uh, and you'll get to speak for a minute. This is your last chance to, um, to respond to anything he said and summarize your argument. Patriot Act works. Um, I didn't say it saved millions of lives. I merely believe that most of it is harmless, but there are a few provisions that it makes that really do need to be reformed. It is discrimination against foreign nationals, its expansive definition of support to terrorist groups, and its sanction of surveillance without probable cause of criminal activity. The Patriot Act violates basic civil liberties and goes against the values of the United States. It was adopted, like so many other anti-terrorism initiatives, without sufficient de deliberation, with virtually no attention paid to the cost to liberty and freedom posed by its reforms. The Act punishes speech and association, removes just measures for distinguishing the guilty from the innocent, and authorizes searches without probable cause or justification. The Act needs to be amended on these three counts in order to preserve constitutional rights of Americans. We do not want to become a surveillance state with a bloated executive at the head, you need to reform the act. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you make sure
sure this was still taping. It made funny sounds for later. Yes, it's safe. Okay, good. good. Terrorists aren't going to wait a week. You realize that, right? Um, Katie, I thought the one, the only, the one thing that um, you could have worked on uh, was well. In the intro speech, it seemed like you ran out of time. I did. And you weren't able, as a result, to yeah. summarize your points and then request that the audience once again remind them of your proposition and be like, that's why I urge you to repeal the Patriot Act or whatever. Uh, so you wanted to you want to work on just the timing. But then you finished the rebuttal kind of early. You know, I thought you could have used up more time there. Oh, I could have gone back, right? Uh, to save what I was doing. Yeah, well, you we could have done that too. But, but yeah, I would have, I definitely, you know, I thought there was more you could have said that, you know, you, you finished a little prematurely. And, um, yeah, that's, um, that's pretty much it. Andrew, for you, the only thing about your negative constructive is I thought maybe could have just been a little more explicit by saying, you know, urging the audience to reject <coughs> the proposition at the end. Um, so, but, uh. Like I said, really good uh, debate overall. Oh, also Bina, I think I would have said a little bit, I know Bina, so I know it's a good source, but I would have said a little bit more about it than it's just a subsidiary of, you know, CBS, because, you know, like Rupert Murdoch owns all kinds of papers from the Wall Street Journal with tabloids. And Wall Street Journal, obviously, is, uh, you know, a really uh, credible paper, but some of the tabloids, not so much. So, you know, someone could go and say, well, this is a, this tabloid is a subsidiary of Wall Street Journal, and it's like, wow, well, it's a tabloid. You know, yeah. so just because something's a subsidiary of a, of a respectable company doesn't necessarily mean that. So I would have just given a little more. I think it's like a business type yeah. website. I would have just said that, a business news website or something like that. But uh, but I know it is a legit source. Um, all right, so let's hear the judges. Let's hear your scores. Guys, come on, guys. Seriously, guys. We're not done yet. Not even half done. All right. Um, I think they both did a really good job of like taking notes and listening to each other because like you both like responded well to what the other one said. You didn't just like have just what you had written down. Um, definitely like very argumentative, like good at like stating your points. Um, like he said, like you didn't at the very end because I guess you didn't get to finish, so you didn't like um, do the summary or whatever. But um, and really good questions, I think. Really good Who did you have winning? Um, Andrew, but not by much. Okay. <laughs> Only because the two last things. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's where you, you lost yeah, points there. Yeah, So you had Andrew winning also? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I had. Um, what is your, do you have any like points about um, stuff I they did well to work on? I had a They both had really good eye contact. <laughs> um, and they were really good speakers. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, pretty much just that. And you both really know what you were talking about. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like you mentioned oh. your research. Well, I'm scared. I did not know what you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you knew your topic uh, pretty much inside out. And I liked how it was also good how you asked for examples and stuff like that. Because sometimes people just say stuff, they hear stuff, they read stuff. It's like, well, give me an example. You know? So that was good that you called them out on it. But really good job overall, both of you. Thank you.